What is going on, guys? It is my favorite time of the season. It is NFL draft season, and I'm back for my second year in a row with some NFL draft previews. I have about 30 of them in the oven cooking just for you guys. Um, so all this footage I'm showing you guys is actually copyrighted by college football. Um, so it sucks that I can't monetize from it. But uh, if you guys could take a minute to check out my Patreon page, um, I have about six tiers in there of different things, uh, different perks. So if you guys could check it out, drop a few dollars. I don't care. You know, it, it could be three bucks, five bucks. Um, it, it doesn't matter. Um, it helps keep the show going and helps me continue to make this content for you guys. So starting off with the 2022 NFL Draft, we have a very special product from Old miss and that is Matt Corral. Matt Corral was a four-star prospect coming out of California, Long Beach Poly, pretty classic uh, high school there in Cali. When we look at Corral, he stands at six foot one. He's 205 pounds. He's a little bit on the leaner side at, at 205, um, but he is a phenomenal athlete at the quarterback position. This past season, PFF graded Matt Corral at an 86.2, which ranked him 38th in the nation, which is actually a little bit of a dip from his previous season, which was he was up over 90 as far as a grade for PFF. Um, but there's a lot of things Matt Corral does very, very well. Um, he throws a very good deep ball. He is, like I said, very, very athletic. And that guy has some fire. Like, look at that, man. The dude is pumped up, ready to play the game. Um, right there, you kind of see a little bit of his intangibles. Uh, just moving out of the pocket. That's against Alabama. A vaunted pass rush. Off his back foot and throws a strike. Um, the, the guy does bring a lot of those intangibles that you really can't coach up. Um, but there are things that, you know, he does do that are bad habits. Um, you know, he comes from a system that's an RPO system, so it's a one-read system, uh, which really isn't how the NFL is played. Um, they might kind of have to take some baby steps, or he might have to sit a year um, early into his NFL career. Um, but like I said, you know, a lot of things that he does do, is hard to teach. Um, like that extra effort right there. I mean, he could have easily gone down, just try to avoid the hit. Like I said, he's 205, he's lean. Um, but the dude is an absolute gamer. I mean, he steps up through the pocket and just lets it rip. I mean, look at the zone coverage right there. You have to throw an absolute fireball in there to complete that pass. Right there, showing a little bit of touch, a little bit of an underthrow, not a perfect ball, um, but that will definitely get the job done. I spoke to what I liked about Matt Corral. You know, his arm talent, he can make all the throws, um, a fantastic athlete, and like I said, my, my favorite thing about him is just his competitive spirit. Um, the guy has a little flair, and I, and I love it. But honestly, his strengths are almost his downfalls too because like that exact play that you just saw right there, is he is a good athlete, he runs with it, and he's competitive, so he wants to get the you know all the yards he can and get all the touchdowns he can, but he takes some really unnecessary hits. Uh, we saw a lot this past season that he was really beat up. Uh, when he had the real big showdown against Malik Willis and Liberty, um, he wasn't really able to run the ball. Um, there, there was times this season where he'd have over 20, 25 touches a game in just the running department, and that's not a great recipe. Um, it hurt him in college, and it's going to kill him in the NFL. We've said that he's kind of an unpolished guy. So, you know, in the NFL, you either put up or shut up. And if he's injured too often or just even early in his career, it's going to slow down his progression as a quarterback, getting through his reads and whatnot. And I just worry that a team might give up on him too early because he's beat up, because he's making, you know, game-winning plays, but kind of stupid plays. That's a nice ball right there, uh, right on the outside shoulder. I mean, just look at this throw right here. He is 30 yards away. He pumps, pumps, and throws a 30-yard missile uh, right on the spot. We see a little quarterback draw action, which he's going to give your team. Um, you know, he's not Lamar Jackson, uh, but I'm going to say he's probably going to be one of those guys, like almost like an early day Donovan McNabb, um, who's almost a deceptively really talented runner because um, he's a good scrambler too. So it doesn't have to be designed run plays. Um, like we look at Patrick Mahomes is a really good example of that, right? Um, you're not going to really run a, a lot of uh, designed quarterback sweeps with him. Um, you might run like a kind of a trick speed option where he's going to give it every single time almost. Um, but, you know, he, he can give you that element of scramble, um, steps up through the pocket. Again, um, you like that play. You know, took a little bit of a hit there. Probably should have been a call. Um, right there, man. Who, who are you trying to prove what to? Why are you lowering that shoulder? Um, you're more valuable to us, you know, losing and not getting that extra two, three yards and staying on the field than being beat up the rest of the game. 
I always try to play around and take a guess of where a player is going to land or where I even think a good landing spot is. And this guy just feels like a perfect fit for the New Orleans Saints at number 18. Um, it seems about the spot he's going to go at in the draft. Um, he could be somewhere as early as 18. Uh, we could see him maybe in the back half of the first round or if something kind of happens, he could be a really, really early uh, second round pick. Um, but he just kind of has that, that element of a Taysom Hill uh, but he can actually throw the football, which is nice. Um, you know, I don't know if they'll feel any different with uh, Sean Payton being gone in New Orleans, but it just feels like it would be a, a pretty good fit. Let him run a little bit of that RPO action with an Alvin Kamara. Uh, maybe Michael Thomas actually finally comes back and plays some football. Um, but he just feels like a, a, a good, upbeat guy would kind of fit that Saints locker room. Um, and I honestly look at it like... I really like Malik Willis, right? Um, I think he has all the tools to be a fantastic quarterback, but the bad thing about Malik Willis is he's super, super raw. Um, you look at somebody like a Kenny Pickett, and I don't think Kenny Pickett's really going to get any better than what he is right now. Um, and I'm not saying he's a bad quarterback right now. He's the most pro-ready right now, uh, him and Desmond Ritter. But the, those guys are kind of, they're, they're capped, I feel like, to a certain point. That's a good ball right there. Um but they're, they're capped to a certain point, and I think we could see Corral get a lot better. We see Malik Willis get a lot better. But I think Corral's almost like, if you like the attributes that Malik Willis brings to the table, I think Corral is a safer version of that. Um, he has the arm talent, not as much as Malik Willis. He can move, not as well as Malik Willis, but he moves very, very well. I mean, that's a good ball to put on the outside, but Jesus, that is a nice catch. I mean, wow. But that intensity right there is going to bring me to my player comp that this guy reminds me of. That player is an athletic version of Baker Mayfield. Um, I know Baker Mayfield isn't everyone's favorite right now. He had a pretty bad season last year. Um, but let's look at Baker Mayfield coming out of college. Um, let's look at him what he did two years ago. Is Baker has a pretty good arm. Um, I do think Crow has a better arm. Um, I do know that Crow is a better athlete than Baker Mayfield, but I, I think where I draw a lot of the, the similarities is they're both fearless, they both are intense, and you know, if Crow doesn't land with the Saints, I think he can do the same thing with what Baker did, is again, I know people are just crapping all over Baker, and I get it, um, but the reason I wanted Cleveland to draft Baker is I thought he was a culture changer, um, he, he's the kind of guy that he could be on the, you know, 0-16 team or 0-17 now um, and be a guy that doesn't care because he thinks he's a winner, he knows he's a winner, and he's going to do everything he can to win. And I think Baker Mayfield's the same way. Um, so that's what I really like about Baker Mayfield, and that's what I love most about Matt Corral. Um, and that's what I kind of see, an athletic, juiced-up Baker Mayfield. Um, but a lot of the same, you know, flaws, right? Um, taking unnecessary hits. Uh, we saw Baker, you know, get banged up with the injuries this year. We saw Corral play with injuries last year. But as it sits right now today, um, I think Corral is going to be the third quarterback off the board. He's my second favorite quarterback, I think, right now today. Um, there's still a lot of stuff to see, like, you know, combine numbers and that kind of stuff. I don't put a whole lot of stock into it, but it's a pretty close race when we look at this quarterback class. Um, but but like I said, um, I do like the guy, um, and I think he brings a lot of upside to the table. But I hope you guys enjoyed this draft preview. Um, like I said, guys, I can't monetize from this, so if you could drop a few dollars in Patreon, man, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, it would mean a ton to me. Uh, but make sure you guys like, subscribe, all that fun stuff, man. Let's grow this channel together. Teamwork makes the dream work, and I will see you guys later. I wanna be the best in the game, invest in my name Check no restraints, I'm obsessed with the pain I ingest, I retain, assess and I change Possessed by the thought, I'll be free one day From society's restraints, money, clout and fame Mud disease, a plague, we